We will go now to the interview time for our faculties of COT. So this is the time for them now to, ano, to cite their ideas about the relationship of mission and also the theology. So may I invite our ano, faculties from College of Theologies, of, uh, all of them. And also I have a prepared question here to ask a question for them. Only three questions. Maybe I just add some ad libs. And also, if you have questions, you can send your questions again in that uh, numbers number. So are you ready now, sirs? Okay, po. so it's about ano po, no? the relationship of theology and missiology. So this is our, our opportunity now to know the, the ideas came from you. And maybe to go directly because the time is not, ano, not so, so long. I will go directly to the first question. And this is the first question. And what is the relationship of theology and missiology for you? No? That will be, uh, what will be the effect of having a wrong theology in one's mission? So the relationship and also the effects of wrong theology in one's mission. Well, since the microphone is uh, given to me, I'll uh, give the first answer. Uh, basically, the, the theology that we have must be uh, seen in us. Okay? Our understanding of who God is must be reflected in the way we live. No matter what kind of technique, no matter how enthusiastic you are, no matter how uh, desirous you are to go out, Unless the, the effect of the redemption given to us by God is being seen and revealed into our lives, then our, our work will be in vain. Because basically what we are telling people are the things that Christ has done to our lives. It is not the things that Christ has done to others. What did Christ has done to your life? Then that then we become a witness on what Christ has done to our lives. So it must be seen first in us. Then it, we go out and tell others that this is what God has done for us. Then God will do the same to you if you accept him. Okay, thank you, Pastor Molina. Um, I think Ryan has specified it very clearly this morning uh, concerning uh, theology, the relationship of theology and mission. Practically speaking, for me, theology is knowing Jesus. Because bad theology will lead into a bad mission. For example, I used to have the idea that when I go to school and, and enrolled in the College of Theology, I can be a better person, I can do these things, I can do those things. But no, we need to have that personal encounter with Jesus so that when encounter with Jesus really affects our to the totality of our lives, then we will do the right mission. So knowing Jesus, good theology and real theology is Jesus Christ himself, and knowing him is one of the ways we can do better theology in our lives. It is important. First, we need to know Jesus so that we can do the right mission. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, praise God for making this church as uh, depository of his truth in the last days. You know? uh, we have been uh, informed by our readings that um, uh, God has endowed this church a deeper knowledge of truth. Do you agree with me? Because in the previous times, um, we have read from the Bible that um, there are many, even prophets who preceded us, who endeavored to understand the whole truth. But God said, those truths are reserved for the last days. Uh, remember Daniel, when Daniel was asking about the interpretation of prophecy, uh, uh, the, the response to him is that seal the book. 
because the interpretation is for the last days, right? When the disciples are asking Jesus about uh, the time of God's uh, plan to establish his kingdom, yes, it's not for you to know the details and all those things that God has appointed. Uh, even the reformers uh, fail to understand much of the truth that we have known today. And so we would like to praise God for knowing a lot of truths in the Bible that uh, were not known previously. But uh, what is truth? What is theology without the purpose of our existence? Uh, the Bible tells us, and uh, I would like to emphasize this on before I sit down, that uh, the most important thing why we exist is because of mission. According to Acts of the Apostles, I do, I do believe that you have read that this particular passage, it says that the Church of God is God's appointed agency for the salvation of man. It is organized for what? For service. And it's what? Its mission is to carry the gospel to the whole world. And so I would like to say that theology without mission is really uh, insufficient uh, to give reason for our existence because what is important is that we impart the message, we impart the truth that we have known. And so with regards to theology of mission, I think um, uh, theology is not the end point, but the reason why God has given us understanding of truth is for us to, to share, to go out. Because without mission, our church is nothing. Okay? Without mission, even our institutions are nothing. AUP has no reason to exist without mission, and so as all our local churches. As I would like to encourage our pastors, it is nice to read theological books, nice to read biblical studies, and all of those things. But if you fail to propel our members, to encourage our members to do mission for God, I think uh, we have not reached our purpose of why we are here. And so remember, mission is our lifeblood. This is the this is the essence of our existence, you know? and that's why we keep on emphasizing the importance of mission. Thank you, Pastor. Theology and missiology are connected with each other. You cannot actually separate one from the other. They always go together. Theology is our study and our knowledge about him, to know him and to know his purpose in our lives, and that is missiology. And so knowing him and his purpose, that's the relationship of theology and missiology. As I used to say, uh, God called us, God who is our creator and our savior called us, the remnant church. As I used to say, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the prophetic church, the church in prophecy with a prophetic message that we need to communicate to the world. And that is what we call the last warning message as we believe and as we learned from the book of Revelation. And also from this book, we know that we have our prophetic mission and so a prophetic church with prophetic message and our prophetic mission called by him who is our creator and our savior for me theology is missiology it is not only connected but it is one and the same when I am theologize, theologizing, I'm doing mission. When I'm correcting your wrong idea in the classroom, that is missiology. <laughs> because if your idea about God is wrong, you could not be saved. So everything that I do is missiology. When I, the, I am theologizing, that is missiology. So for me, theology is missiology. Okay, <laughs> So thank you, Pastor. So we will go directly to the next question. Uh, so next question, can you, this time we will now hear some of the experience, no? Can you cite an experience in the mission field that you have seen that indeed right theology results to right missiology? Did you have an experience wherein you have applied a wrong theology in your mission field? What have you learned from it? The microphone is 
in my hand, so I'll be the first. Well, understanding about God is progressive. Well, I understood about God today. My understanding may, may not be the same tomorrow because I'm asking that the Holy Spirit will always lead me to an appropriate appreciation and understanding about God. In my reflections, there was a time that I was preaching, my sermon was not appropriate, but it was already preached and I could not correct those things. But it's also served. But I'm praying that those people will continue to search also and they will arrive to the appropriate truth. Because we could not say that today we have the, the right or the ultimate correct understanding about the truth. We continue to study and the Holy Spirit will continue to lead us in appreciating the truth. So we could not deny that there was a time that we preached that the inappropriate message. But hopefully those people who heard that one will not be lost. As I told you, for me, theology is missiology. I, everything that I do, when I expound about God, that is missiology. Because the object of our mission is not only the people outside the church. It includes you. And it includes us. So, with that questions, there are lots. When I am reflecting, but I am not regretting, I am only asking God that those people who heard those inappropriate sermon that I preached before, will be guided by the Holy Spirit to arrive into appropriate understanding of the truth. When I was a newly baptized Seventh-day Adventist, I understand that the Seventh-day Adventist uh, church teaches the truth. And uh, I, I come to know from my childhood that the seventh day indeed is the Sabbath of the Lord. I heard it from my, from my grandpa, who actually is the pioneer Seventh-day Adventist in our town, in Bawan, Batangas. But when I was baptized in the Seventh-day Adventist church, I was, I was disturbed because of some Seventh-day Adventists, former Seventh-day Adventists who came to our church. And this is the kind of theology that they are teaching. If you are, not a, if you are not a vegetarian, you will not be saved. All right? If you are not a vegetarian, you will not be saved. And so early, uh, at the early part of my conversion, I have realized how important actually it is to understand correctly the teaching of the Bible and the teaching of Ellen G. White. Okay? And uh, when I was in the field, uh, I happened to uh, encounter some of the, again, uh, groups who went out of our church and they made actually the writings of Ellen G. White the main source of their theology, if that is a theology. And uh, I really struggle. I really struggle. And uh, this group of former uh, brothers and sisters of ours, they are very active in a small group. In a small group. And they used to go to the house of our members. And so, in that case, I would like to tell you, young people, that if in case there are groups in the field who will go to your district and go to the members of our church, take care of the flock. Take care of the flock. Do not assume or do not take the position of wait and see. You must go and protect the flock. And even though I can hear a lot of eisegesis from the Bible, as they used to explain, and also from the writings of Ellen G. White, including all the negative words against the Seventh-day Adventist Church, I stayed with the group just to protect the flock. And so by God's grace, they were not able uh, they were not able to convince even their relatives in the district. And so that's why it's very important actually 
he has the right understanding of the Bible and the writings of Ellen G. White. Correct theology. Okay, so I think most have been mentioned by, by Pastor Cornelius and Dr. Amorao. But, but I would like to, to share to you uh, some of the things that I did when I was in the district. One of them is that every time I, I was assigned to a particular district, I usually gather, the first thing that I do is, I, is to gather the, um, all, the lame, uh, all the elders and deacons and uh, those who are pillars of the church. And we had regular t training, theological training, you know, uh, um, how, how to lead, how to understand our basic theological beliefs. We did those trainings during Sabbath afternoon and Sunday morning. Okay, and I saw my members, my elders, and many of them uh, really uh, sacrificing their time in order to know a lot of things about our church, our theology. But they always inculcated and I always uh, told them that what we have been doing are just part of uh, our, you know, uh, our responsibility as leaders of the church. And I always bid them to, to go to their own churches and share to all the members uh, the right understanding of our beliefs and our practices. But most especially is the fact that I encourage them to not to think that the elders and the pastor are Michael Jordan. That, so they are not there to do all the, all the works and all the parts of service. So I always told them, uh, always made the, make the members aware that all of them are part of the working force. It means that uh, we always quote uh, the writings of Ellen White, Desire of Ages, and of course the gospel, of course we have found in, in the Bible, uh, but the Desire of Ages, uh, Ages uh, tells us that all Christians are born in the kingdom of God as, as what? As missionaries, right? And so uh, we, we always emphasize, and by God's grace, I saw that many of my members really uh, bear fruit for God. And as a matter of fact, uh, we always have uh, a good number of baptism without uh, considering the statistics, the one that we have tackled yesterday. But you know, baptism comes just as a result of our uh, work of love for God. And so I, I saw that when our members are rightly informed and oriented about their uh, privileges of service, uh, I saw that uh, mission and understanding of our theology would be uh, very much basic in the proclamation of the gospel. And you would see your churches grow if uh, they are well acquainted with our teachings and well informed about their privileges of service. And so, um, praise God that our church is growing by leap and bounds because of uh, our understanding of uh, mission. Okay, so praise God for that. Thank you very much. Like what the Pastor Cornelius mentioned a while ago, we cannot change those mistakes that we had done in the past. We uh, charge it to experience. <laughs> but today, uh, I would like to share something to you which uh, really bothers me a lot. I kept repeating it to my uh, classes and so also to some of uh, my friends. You know, one of the problems of the Adventist Church is the, the going out. Baptism plenty, then going out at the back door. And in my initial survey, I already mentioned this the other day, I am, very, I am very much disturbed that interviewing people who backslided, actually these are only few, but initial, I found out that they have reasons why they were baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist Church, various reasons. But among those I interviewed, it was only that uh, born Adventist individual who said, I was baptized because of salvation, because of my love for the Lord. But the rest of them said, you know what? Our, the, the elder used to, to bring me to church. And one time he told me, since I have been going to church for long, I need to be baptized. So I, I was baptized. And one said, you know, because my parents were baptized, so I was baptized. So also my friend was what is the implication? What is the message of this to us? In other words, probably, probably, these are the probabilities, you know, in research you have the probabilities. It is possible that we are baptizing people who are not converted. We are baptizing people who have learned probably some of the doctrines, but they have not in, they have, they do not have a real encounter, a personal encounter with the person, with the Savior. 
So what does it mean? What, is, what does it imply? So I think, you know, from here, because we are the ones producing pastors, we need to be very careful in, in teaching you of the right theology. And I think those people in the field should also understand that they have to shift a paradigm. If this is the kind of people that we are producing in the church, then we are having, we're giving them a wrong theology because basically a person is baptized because of his relationship as a response to his relationship with Jesus. Okay. Um, let me bring your attention to three situations. One is um, when I took theology, um, I have a bad connotation during that particular time because I wanted to finish education, particularly college education. Um, my parents were poor, right? So they cannot finance my education. So when the Seventh-day Adventist preacher came to our town, there was a promise that I will have scholarship. It's really bad. But back in my mind, what's the goal? To obtain college education without really knowing the Lord. So I have to struggle for the next five years concerning this. Many times in my, in my life, I have asked the question, Lord, why do I keep changing my mind when it comes to really working for you? Sometimes I want to wear white uniform. Sometimes I want to be like somebody else and not really focusing on the right direction. So as I have stated a while ago, if you have reached that if you're doing, you're doing this because of your bad objective, because of your bad connotation in mind, you will end up to nothing. A second point was, I can't remember when I was in college. Um, we work on this what we call church manual. I can't remember. It was only after graduation that I, I really, uh, no, two years after graduation actually, that I started to browse the church manual. Then suddenly I was assigned in a church and I was told that I will be the chairman of the board, right? The church board. I said, where in the world do you find it? And I said, I was, I was bereft of that knowledge. I said, wow. It took me several nights and weeks, you know, to struggle with the church manual so that I can do best in managing the church. So that's what I did. And then, uh, I forgot the last one. Uh, come on. <laughs> All right, it's hard to get old. Um, this is important. The last one is. Later, 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 right? <laughs> Let me do it later, okay? Okay, so I see that the, the last question is can be summarized as their last word, but I think I will give it to Pastor Amorau later. But before we entertain this uh, third question, we will go first to the two questions. We will, also, uh, we will only entertain two questions. One is directly addressed to Pastor Conejos, and then the other one may be. Uh, any one of them can answer. Hello? Before the question, I remember now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for that. Okay. I remember uh, Dr. Mergal yesterday. He, he had difficulty concerning zero baptism. I have the same struggle, you know. Uh, uh, I have no report whatsoever. How come I don't have baptism in my district? So what I did was to focus on the Seventh-day Adventist children, right? Seventh-day Adventist children, really bad. My baptism were eight, nine, ten years old, <laughs> really bad, right? <laughs> but I had the report, right? <laughs> and then finally, what in the world am I doing, right? What in the world am I doing? Do I really work out in the mission which God had provided for me? And then suddenly I stood for what is right and said, baptism or no baptism, I'll do wherein I will, I will, I will stand for what I believe 
to be the right thing. So since the problem of the church is the back door, what I did, my, my, my district then, I have 25 churches, believe me. Pastor uh, uh, De, De Ocampo was my boss then. It was difficult, you know. But what I did was to stay in the church. I left home from sometime Tuesday night. You got to get out uh, from home Tuesday night. Or if I can do it Wednesday morning, right, I'll go and be back sometimes Sunday night or Monday morning. I had to stay with the church members and really do some nurturing, right? I stay with them, one church every week, right? So that helped me a lot. And I, I had no difficulty when it comes to baptism. For after all, they were the ones producing, not me. All right. Thank Praise you, pastors. So let's go to the question for Pastor Conejos. So to Pastor Conejos, how will you address those missionaries who have wrong theology? Because there's a lot of our missionary who do missiology with wrong theology. Well, I could not, I don't have op authority of those who are missionaries in the field, but I have responsibility for you in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm hoping that if one of you will become missionary in the future, you will remember what I have instructed you in the classroom. I could not do anything uh, to those missionaries out there in the field, but my concerns is with you right now, those who are with us in the classroom. So those of you who are with me in the classroom, if you need to stay eight years in that classroom, that is needed so that you can be better prepared for the future, okay? Amen. Amen. So let's go to uh, next question. Anyone can, uh, can answer with you, po. Uh, aside from uh, in different people have different ways of doing mission. One could be doing mission and it might be considered not mission by others. So if theology is missiology in this context, context, when is mission theology or vice versa? Which leads us to the question, what is mission? Anyway, that's the answer of Pastor Conejos a while ago. <laughs> okay, I will elaborate further. My statement that theology is missiology. Because theology is first of all understanding Christ and his dealings with us. And that is what we are going to share, is it? So when we share that one, that is mission. So when I am in the classroom, I'm saying that I'm doing mission. So missiology is not only going out somewhere until... You share Christ every day that you are talking about Christ. You should have the correct appreciation of how you are going to share Christ. God is love. How can you, uh, that's why I'm objecting those teachers in the kindergarten during Sabbath school. They said, children, be quiet because Jesus is angry with you. What is, that teacher is doing missiology in the classroom. Be quiet. You need to stay outside the church or else God will burn you. Imagine what kind of God that we are projecting to people. So for me, correct understanding about God, we are talking about God, that is missiology. So we need to be sure and we need to ask the Holy Spirit that we should have the correct understanding, perspective about the God that we serve. Because we are talking about that God, that is mission. So that is my further elaboration on that one. I would like to clarify that we are not talking about missionaries here. Because all of us are missionaries, whether you like it or not, whether you are conscious or not, we are all missionaries. The problem today with the Adventist Church is that they think that missiology or going out is the work of some people, chosen few, and the pastors. Basically, why do, we, why do we have missions? It's because of the encounter we had with Christ. Unless you have that encounter, you do not have the right to go out. Let me, let me repeat it. Unless you have that personal encounter with Christ, you do not have the right to go out. To the disciples, Christ said, you will be my witnesses. All throughout. Witnesses about what? Their experience with Christ. Then Christ, then we claim we are the witnesses of Christ. Witnessing for what? 
Usually we give doctrines, but we do not say anything what Christ has done to us. Basically, when we go out, we do not tell doctrines. We tell them of what Christ has done to us personally. And to me, that is the best mission. When we tell people about the things that Christ has done to us, then people will see that indeed they would like to accept that Christ who has changed you and now they, were, they are willing to be changed also. Okay, so before I address this last question, those who send their, you know, their questions, uh, the organizer said that it can be answered, it will be given time this uh, coming afternoon. So last question, and also for the last word for Pastor Amorau. Carrying these lessons, what challenge can you give in studying theology as it shaped one's mission? We have been talking about the word mission, but uh, I hope that we understand the meaning of mission uh, in the right perspective. We have, we have heard and we have perhaps seen movies with the word mission, mission possible, mission impossible, but uh, what is your understanding of the word mission in the context of theology? Okay, what is your understanding? What is your personal knowledge now? What, what, what this mission is all about? Ano ba talaga itong mission na to? Alright? If I will, for example, ask uh, this faculty in the College of Theology, what is your, what is your definition of mission? That's very important. Uh, the word theology, it's very uh, it's very easy perhaps to give an understanding and definition. Theo means what? Means God. Theology means perhaps study or, yes, study or knowledge about God. We study so that we learn about God. But what about missiology? Yes, it's study of mission. What, what's, what was this mission all about? Ano ba talaga ang mission? If I will ask you, what is our mission? By the way, mayroong kanta, ano? Di ba mayroong kanta? There's song about it. Uh, to love the Lord our God is the heart of our mission. Okay? We have that song. To love the Lord our God is the heart of our mission. Tama ba? It's the heartbeat of our mission. To love the Lord our God is the heartbeat of our mission. So, to love Him and to lead others to love him. So, di ba? Parang something like that. But I think, personally, this is my personal understanding, our mission can be easily uh, remembered and understood in the light of our philosophy of education here in AUP. The work of redemption and the work of education are one. To restore men the lost image of God, and that is through the harmonious development of the four aspects. And so, our mission actually is restoration. That's the mission of God. To restore man in his image and to restore man in his kingdom. And when we experience it, young people, then we have to share it. Because that, that mission actually from God he actually is the originator of it. And when we, when we learn of Him, it actually will grow and it will multiply from us. It will spread and it will actually expand. That is our mission. To restore the lost image of God in us and to restore man in His kingdom. And after we have experienced this, we are going actually to share it because that is the nature of the God that we are serving. God is love. Thank you, pastors, uh, for, uh, for the time that you have spent to us. So I, will not, uh, I don't want to add uh, the last word because it's the last word. So we invite now the song leaders. Song leaders. <laughs>